call. Take her, please. Call the roll. Take the roll. Alderman Wesley? Here. Alderman Police? Here. Alderman Lewitan? Here. Alderman Shockey? Here. Alderman Cadella? Here. Alderman Winger? Here. Alderman Coles? Here. Alderman Knipe? Here. First item is an approval of the minutes of August 14th, 2008. Uh, do I have a motion? So I'll move. Make, a, make a motion to approve the minutes of August 14th, 2008. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, before I get into the next item, uh, Alderman Wesley would like to make a statement. Um, seven years ago today, we had a terrible thing that happened to the United States, the World Trade Center. What I'm asking is to have a moment of silence for those people who lost their life in the World Trade Center and all through the country. Thank you. Thank you. That was very appropriate. Uh, next item is a report and recommendation, case number 08-SU9, special use permit for the Wooddale Library District at 140 North School Street. No. Is it east or? There's no north or east or west or, okay, 140 School Street. <laughs> We can't. Can you speak up a little bit more? To use the property located at 140 School Street for library purposes. The Board of Trustees is under contract to purchase the 140 School Street property, which is located immediately adjacent to the main library facility. What I'd like to do tonight, just briefly, is to present an overview of the application, the uses that the library wishes to put the property to, and to uh, relate the ZBA's recommendations that we obtained on August 18, together with Fire District and City Building Department input, and also lay out for you how our application meets the special use standards. Um, to start, I'll, I'll say that um, the library specifically wishes to use the property for relocation of the administrative offices from the main library facility to the 140 School Street property. 140 School Street is a residential single family property. It is zoned R2 single family residence district to the north is limited manufacturing district, and to the south, east, and west of the property is R2 single family district. In order to um, utilize the property for public service purposes, which is what we seek to do, we need a special use permit. We need your approval. Um, the library does have space needs. Um, they, they need more space to utilize for public service within the main facility. So relocating the administrative offices to the 140 School Street property, uh, which is in very good condition, would certainly help the library meet library patron needs, allow for more speed meeting space, allow for more computer use in the library, uh, reduce the noise levels. So there's all types of reasons why this is a, a desirable use for the property and why the library is seeking to acquire it for this purpose. Uh, there will be, uh, if the use is approved, library employee training, uh, special programming, uh, book club meetings, and uh, collection space uh, util utilization in the uh, adjacent property at 140 School Street that will help alleviate the space needs of the library and allow for uh, more private meeting space for the patrons. The uh, property currently meets standards uh, for R2, 
zoning. Uh, there are no no issues uh, for front yard, side, rear yard, lot coverage, parking. Everything would essentially remain the same. The library is not planning to make changes to the property. Uh, there would be a minimal impact in that they would utilize the existing structure without placing any additions onto it. There would be a walking path from the main library facility to the property next door. The library um, employees, and there would be only a few of them that would, that would work in the administrative offices on this property, would utilize the parking at the main library facility and utilize the walking path. Uh, there's not very much distance between the building and the structure on the 140 School Street property at all. Um, there would be enhancements made to the property. And let me, let me uh, address this Zoning Board of Appeals recommendations. Uh, they, they considered our application positively on August 18 and suggested that we um, have the fire department review the property, um, update or review ADA standards, and make sure that the uh, uh, library district would have the ability to comply with building codes by utilizing this property. The fire district and the building safety department on August 28 conducted a joint inspection. Yvonne Bergendorf is with me tonight. She is the director of the library district, and she was with the representatives from the fire department, uh, excuse me, the fire district and the building department during that inspection of the property. Uh, the fire department determined that it would allow occupancy of the first and second floors of the structure at 140 School Street for the administrative offices, office purposes, and that the basement should be used for storage only. The public functions for the library would be held on the first floor only of the building. Fire, fire district recommendations and requests were to have the library districts install a fire alarm system throughout the entire structure that is will be um, NFPA compliant, National Fire Protection Association compliant, install exit and emergency lighting, install approved locking hardware on the exit doors as required by code. The city's building department added to those requirements that the occupancy must be limited to 30 persons, which is, which is fine. They, ordinarily, there will just be a few employees aside from the pro, uh, when the programming is not in place. Uh, the city also added that there would be a handrail and guardrail required to the basement stairs. There's an open section of the basement stairs that is lacking a handrail, and that will be installed in order to bring the that uh, portion of the improvement in compliance with code. Under ADA, handy, handicap accessible ramp would be installed at the front entrance. The doorway is wide enough to accommodate and meet standards. The uh, bathroom doorway will need to be widened and there will need to be an accessible toilet area on the first level, which is, is dual, very doable. <laughs> Um, under the Illinois Accessibility Code. So I think in the ADA upgrades that we have reviewed, in fact, I know that they, they are um, minor in nature and they can, can be complied with for use of that first floor of the structure for public meeting purposes and administrative offices. We thank the city for um, reviewing in advance with us this property and our proposed use and your offer to assist the city's offer, build, building department's offer to help us comply with the code in every respect. Uh, next, what I'd like to do is review the special use standards for you and then open it up for, for questions. This uh, application for special use would serve the public convenience and would not be detrimental to the public health, safety, comfort, and general welfare. I think primarily what I have mentioned is that the library space needs are such that the use of the library would be greatly enhanced by allowing the permit. Um, the property is uh, so close next door that it, it, it almost seemed to me when I looked at it this evening, it's almost meant to be um, because it's so convenient and so accessible for the administrative staff to utilize. Secondly, the location and size of the property is suitable for the special use. The proposed use will not intensify the use as it exists today. In fact, it will remain virtually the same. The street access will remain the same from School Street. There is a driveway from School Street leading to the property just west of the entrance to the library. The use will be in harmony with adjacent and nearby residences and will continue to allow for the order, 
orderly development of the R2 district. The special use, th thirdly, the special use will not affect and will enhance the use and enjoyment of property in the vicinity. Um, as to the main library, it will in, uh, uh, lend itself to allowing a more quiet environment where administrative offices can now be converted for public use. Um, computer rooms, for example, can now be in public space rather than open space, which makes it more quiet for the library patrons utilizing the reading areas and more possible for those needing computer use to do that as well. Um, the, um, I think I've covered it on that one. Uh, it will not affect, diminish, or impair the valuations in the neighborhood, which is surrounding R2 property. Fourth, the nature, location, and size of the building will not be changed and will not impede, hinder, or discourage the development and use of adjacent lands and buildings in this R2 district. And fifth, the parking areas will remain unchanged. There is a driveway that leads to the 140 School Street structure that will remain unchanged. And if there is a need for the administrative staff to park, they would park in that, on that driveway. So the use by the library would be very similar to the use as it exists today for residents. The parking lot that exists for the existing, for the main library building is going to, for the most part, be utilized for all purposes, patron and administrative staff, and that walking path that connects. Uh, so there will not be an increase in, in uh, uh, ingress, egress on that driveway or number of cars, at least not that we can anticipate maybe, you know, one or two additional cars at a given time. The entrance and um, exit, as I said, will remain the same. No traffic hazards or congestion involved. And finally, the special use will conform to the regulations of the zoning district, except as modified by the zoning ordinance. We would anticipate that if we obtain city council approval of our, our request for this permit, that the conditions that the fire district has suggested and the city has recommended will be part of the ordinance, and we fully uh, appreciate those requirements and will comply with them. Are there questions? The Zoning Board of Appeals is determined based upon information presented at the public hearing on August 18th that the petitioner met the requirements as listed in the Special Use Standards Review. These findings of fact were the basis for the recommendation for the approval of the petition. Therefore, I will make a motion that a special use permit to allow for the relocation of the library district's administrative offices from their main facility to the existing structure at 140 Street, 140 School Street. Subject property is adjacent to the existing library, which operates under the existing special use permit granted in 1979. The new special use permit will allow the library to offer additional programs and collection space within its existing building without having to construct an addition. Do I have a second? Second. On the question? On the question. Uh, I'd like to add to that, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, that this approval is subject to the, su the successful completion uh, of meeting all ADA, NFPA, and other uh, required building codes prior to occupancy under the structure's new use. If you I agree, agree, does the seconder agree? Obviously, yes. I second agree. Okay. Any other questions? Alderman Wesley, had your hand up earlier. Yeah, I, I have two questions. When, when did the fire department and the building department walk through that building? August 28th. Uh, may I ask the question, why did the council not get a copy of that walkthrough in our packet? The letter was drafted uh, and sent out to the library district with all final thoughts and comments on September the 8th. Uh, it was after the packets were distributed. Okay, the other question I have, is that going to be one PIN number or is that going to be two separate lots? At present, it is two separate lots, two separate PIN numbers. Is it going to be one joining together then? Consolidated? The closing has not taken place, the property is under contract, and if the Board of Library Trustees determines that would be desirable so that it would receive one tax bill, are you speaking of a, tax, a, a combination of the two properties to become? 
Yeah. One, that is possible to do. Uh, we haven't discussed it yet. Yeah. Thank you. Alderman Lawton. I have a concern about traffic. Um, I, I, I attempted to query some of the neighbors about uh, how they felt the traffic flow was, if they had any objections, and I, I was able to reach uh, Christine uh, Marietta, who lives two doors down, who has three children, and she's concerned about the increased traffic that this is going to generate. Um, the traffic is the problem, according to her. There are not enough posted signs to indicate it's a 20, 20 mile an hour street. She feels that the you know, park at the end of the street and the residential traffic, added, adding the library traffic, all that will increase the danger to the children on the bicycles uh, who use the street. And uh, I gotta ask you, last year you tried to, you had a plan that was gonna put a road through from <laughs> school to, uh, um, uh, what's that street on the on the south side, Ferreira? Ferreira. You you were trying to do a purchase of land to create a road because you want exits to go to the south and to the and to the north. Uh, what is your ultimate goal on traffic in this area? At this point. There is no anticipated increase in traffic, and I can certainly understand the neighbor's concern. The anticipation may be on her part that we intend to improve the property at 140 School Street for additional parking purposes. Currently, that is not the, intended, the intent at all. Uh, future plans may lead to that happening, and in the event we would seek your approval to change the configuration of the parking on the property, we would come back to request an amendment to the special use for that. But at current time, it is my understanding that the parking or the ingress-egress use of that driveway will be limited to the administrative staff, which will be very few in number on that property, who for the most part will be utilizing the existing main facility parking lot. So I, I, I would wish to assure that neighbor that for the immediate future and for the near term, the parking configuration will not change and there will be, there is no plan at present to put an additional roadway or um, area added to the driveway at all. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's good to know that you're not planning that at this time. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking at your map and I noticed that there are four contiguous properties to your land. Are you going to be coming back for, per, for, for variances on future lots that you may be going after? Um, variances, I don't know. But um, there is a desire on the part of the library district to acquire additional land to meet their space needs in the future. And it's possible that they may uh, actively seek to acquire additional properties in addition to the 140 School Street property. At current, there are no other properties under contract, um, but the library is interested in expanding its land area by acquiring additional adjacent property if possible. So the answer is yes, you are going to acquire additional land adjacent to you. Well, I, I think that's a desire, but I, I, it's not currently in the work. It, 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 you know, under contract or there's not been any deal struck to do so. Not right now, but you are looking. Yes. The library district is interested to meet the, the community's needs. And you, mm -hmm. Alderman Winger. I just want to remind us that the discussion here today is whether we're going to give a special use to that property at 140 School Street. It's not whether there's going to be future acquisitions of property or even about the acquisition of that property. It's about granting a special use or not. Thank you. Alderman Coles. I don't care what anybody says. I don't know how you are, but libraries are one of the most important things in a community. Without a good library, the community doesn't run right. These kids need a good library. And you, you, you're talking about expansion. You don't know what's going to happen 10 years from now. Uh, if the property comes in front of theirs next to it, where you turn in and 
I go to the library all the time. And you turn in over there to put the books in, there's property in front of that. If they if that come up for uh, sale, I think the library would definitely take that piece of property. So, I mean, you're talking about something that may happen 10 years from now. You may not even be here. You may be gone. I may be gone. But the library is a very important part of the community. I remember when the, when the post office was part of the library. Then it went over to Spicel Creek where the doctor's office and now we, we, we put this library in, in 1979. You weren't even here. I was here, and we voted on it. And it only won by two votes. And I remember that. And you're talking about something that might happen 10 years from now. The library needs this. My wife goes to the library every day. She takes books out all the time. Every week, she's got books she reads. And without the library, for, you, you might as well throw the community out the window. Thank you. I'm done. Paul McCadella. Hey, let me just say that I mean we got a pretty specific set of standards reviews to uh, to to pick and you know to to use as basically our our review for whether or not this meets standards. Um, and, and it has nothing to do about whether the library needs it. It has nothing to do about the history of the library, and it has nothing to do about future acquisitions. So. This is about this particular piece of property, and is it appropriate uh, for, for use as a special use? So once again, just want to remind everybody up here, that's what we're discussing tonight. Anything else is probably inappropriate. OK, uh, I think some of this conversation might be better uh, talked about at the Shape of Wooddale meeting on the 30th of this month at 7 PM at the Wooddale Junior High. If anybody does have any questions and wants to ask questions from the library, that would be appropriate time. We'd be uh, pleased to answer your questions. Pardon me? If you need us to, we'd be pleased to answer any questions. Any other comments, questions? OK, would the uh, minute taker please call the vote? Alderman Wesley. Yes. <laughs> Alderman Police. Yes. Alderman Lewitan? No. Alderman Shockey? Yes. Alderman Cadella? Yes. Alderman Winger? Yes. Alderman Coles? Yes, of course. Alderman Knight? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, next item is a report and recommendation. And a, thank you very much, by the way. I appreciate it. Thank you. May I add that if anyone has questions, to please call Yvonne, the library director, and she'd be happy to answer them for you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is a report and recommendation on a petition for pre annexation review the Burrs property at 5 North 061 Wooddale Road. Um, is somebody here or do you, Mr. Mr. Burris is here. here? Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Burris are here to answer any questions if you have. Uh, there's a memo in the package which explains the reason why they're here before you tonight. I grew up at 156 West Street. Isn't that weird? Do you have Mr. Uh, Alderman Wesley? Well, are you going to present or, or? I'm sorry? Are they going to present or could I ask the questions right off the bat? My question here is. Um, I know you want to add addition to, to this house yes. under the county code. Am I correct? But meanwhile, you want to annex it into the city of Wooddale. Correct. Mike, you might want to go up to the microphone if you're going to answer. Yeah. My question on that is, and, and I have addressed this concern before, not just because you, but on the annex property end. My concern is that, again, we have no control on what they could build on that site. And I still feel that it is not right that they could build under this code and come into Woodell later down the line with whatever they want. I just don't feel that that's comfortable. I want, what I want to see is that we want to have control of what they build because we don't know their lot coverage in the county, and I don't have the county plot plan or how big these houses could be or anything like that. Ours could be different. Correct. Okay. 
I just don't think it's fair if we're going to annex these, and I'm not against annexing you in. Believe me. I'm more against that we do not have control over what they built. And in that respect, um, if this petitioner were able to annex, they did indicate that they would be willing to annex. However, they are currently not contiguous with the city. Um, as you, you recall, they are adjacent to the Klein subdivision that we, we were reviewing. That particular subdivision has not been annexed as of this date. So this particular property is not contiguous with the city of Wooddale. So pre-annexation is the only option to them at this point. However, they have, through the pre-annexation, they are agreeing to annex when it becomes possible, which will be when the client subdivision is completed. And uh, uh, not completed, but when the client subdivision is annexed. And they will, uh, we could put through the um, pre-annexation agreement that no, that subdivision of the property, I believe we could put in the pre-annexation agreement that no subdivision of the property would be allowed without city approval. My question is, when is Klein going to annex that property, or when are they going that to I do would, that? I inquired with the uh, city attorney on this several times in the past, since Mr. Burris has, has inquired about this situation, uh, and have been informed that uh, all of their requests as to where it is going are in the hands of the attorney for Mr. Klein, and they keep on informing uh, our attorneys, that the city attorneys, that they will be responding to them shortly. Alderman Coles, I think, is next. Uh, uh, this article that you have here about your septic tank, septic field. Yes, this sir. This is the one of the real reasons why you want to pre-annex into the, the, the city of Wooddale. Yes, the root of all evil. These yes. are the, this is the home that's set way back. Yes, sir. Way back. Uh, uh, no, there's actually a home that's behind us. Oh, there's a home behind you. Yes. I thought it was. Uh, I, I, I looked at it wrong then. There's a home that's further back. Oh, yeah. This is the front house, the front one. Correct. Correct. The front one. And the reason that you want to pre annex is because of the septic tank and you can't enlarge it. And in order to get the, you, you, we have a pipe that's up there for, uh, for sewage. So you want to tap into that? Yes, sir. That's the reason they want to pre-annex. And uh, I, 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 I think we should go along with that, seeing that Klein did get his uh, stuff lined up, but he hasn't annexed into the city yet. So, but the, li the line is there. So I, I suggest that we do it. And Alderman Cadella. It, it's, it is a little bit vague what the exact problem is with regards to not being able to increase the, uh, the septic field size. Obviously, it's a big lot. I mean, I don't have septic knowledge. So it, what, what, are the, what are the actual constraints, just so I understand better what you're up against here? Basically, I think the entire front yard becomes a septic field. The kids are in the septic field all, all the time. Besides that, I'm kind of tired of buying water heaters and water softeners and that's uh, getting a little old okay and then one other comment i mean there's 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 something that's troubling about this and it has nothing to do with you or your property or your desire to annex or pre-annex what's troubling is that several months ago we approved annexation of the property next door and we're still waiting for that petitioner to follow through with what we told him he could do. It puts you in a uniquely awkward position, and it puts us in a uniquely awkward position. And I'm kind of uh, wondering, what do we have anything on the books? Is there any ordinance? Is there any policy with a statute of limitations on how long um, uh, a council decision is good for uh, without it being acted on? If there is a statute of limitations, and let's say that that's 12 months, and Klein doesn't do it, their pre-annexation agreement really means nothing because it's, it's kind of off, it's, it's off the charts at that point. I mean, fortunately, these people would have access to the sewer and water, but we're in a position where we thought one thing and another thing is what happened. So wh where are we with that? What is, what's going on? Again, I, I 
consulted with the city attorney on this matter just today to make sure there was no change in the status. And they have been at least weekly requesting information from Mr. Klein's attorneys regarding the final subdividers and annexation agreements. And the attorney keeps responding back that the information is coming soon. The information is coming soon. The attorneys and I, the city attorney and I did discuss today the statute of limitations or a timeline as to when a decision would need to be done. They're researching into it a little bit further, but they do believe that six to 12 months is the general time frame when it should be completed within. Yeah, we've always been told that if somebody wants to do something, they have one year that the permit is available to them. After that, they would have to start all over again. Is that on the books? Is that actually there or not? They're researching to confirm that that exact language is there. They also believe that to be the case. When will we find out about that? I will inquire with them again tomorrow and see if we can have an answer for the council at the next meeting. Next week? Yes. Good. Thank you. Alderman Winger. So I listened to Alderman Kadala and I do agree that that could be a potential issue for the petitioners here tonight. So I would ask Mr. Clicker, can you go back to the attorney and see if we can come up with a safeguard for these petitioners so they won't be affected if Klein doesn't come back within the time frame? We can look as is very similar. This is actually kind of a similar situation to the Jazz Colt property, which the council has recently agreed to enter into a free annexation agreement with. In that situation, Mr. Jazz Colt is already contiguous. It's just the need for water that isn't there at this point. Again, dependent on the Klein subdivision. In that case, they put a timeline in that if the water is not brought within a certain distance of Mr. Jazz Colt's property, that by a certain date, Mr. Jazz Colt would have to have the water main extended himself. However, I don't think that that would be applicable in this case since, again, the property is not contiguous with the city of Wooddale. So if the Klein subdivision were to, for some reason, not happen, this property could not be annexed. But again, as I stated, the petitioner is willing to annex once it becomes available. So does the petitioner have an issue then within... So if Klein misses his statute of limitations, then does it mean that they can just not annex in at some point and the pre-annexation sits out there indefinitely? Yeah, the pre-annexation could be written or structured in a way that it's kind of open-ended. That if Klein were to annex or if that were to not happen or if other properties to the south, which we are also in discussions with the property owners there for a subdivision on that side, if that were to happen, they would be contiguous on the southern border of the property and could annex at that point. The pre-annexation agreement would not necessarily have to have a sunset to it. Okay, so then potentially that's the fix to this issue that if you can work with the attorney to come up with the best way to script it so they are covered if Klein doesn't annex. So in other words, they would be getting a bill for the sewer only? Correct. There is no water at this point. There is a sewer line, city sewer line, which does run right in front of their property as of this date. Okay, now if you can close your ears for a minute, I want to ask another question. What happens if they don't pay their sewer bill? That's a good question. There are sewer only accounts that we have in the city already. I know that with a water bill, it's very easy. You can go and remedy the situation by shutting off their water service. Sewer service, it's a little more difficult to do that. I believe our remedies would be through the legal process through essentially leaning the property. But I can verify that with our finance department. By next week? Yes, sir. Okay. Alderman Police? I've got a question along the same line. So pre-annex, I've got no problem bringing them into the city. I guess you can't annex them in because they're not contiguous, whatever the legal stuff is. What about real estate taxes then? Right now, they don't pay city taxes. It's the county. Correct. It is county. So if we pre-annex, do they start paying real estate taxes right away? No. No. They're just going to tap into the sewer. Klein says, you know what, this project, I don't want to do it. He doesn't do anything. Then what? 
Again, we're as we're, we're, we're stuck. Just, as we were discussing, the pre-annexation would still be in existence. It would still be tied into the sewer. Uh, other, there are other possibilities out there right now. As I said, we are in early discussions with other developers on properties to the south uh, of this of the petitioner's property. If that were to annex in, again, they would be contiguous. They would be then water city, city's water would be brought within us with in front of their property, and we would per the pre-annexation agreement no. require them to tie in and annex. But as far as real estate taxes. No. Nothing kicks in until they're fully annexed. Correct. I'm just wondering, does Klein own that other property you're talking about? The south of the no, he doesn't. Because the signs out front are exactly the same. The, 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 the property to the south of the petitioner is not owned by Mr. Klein. Okay. Any other questions? Alderman Wesley. One, one follow-up. I understand their point here. And again, if Klein backs out of this deal, we still don't have control on how big of a house that they could build? What? We don't. <coughs> okay, because they, they're still going to build under the county guide codes. Klein has to build under our code because if he, if, or else he doesn't get the annexation. We got control of that. I'm just saying, I don't know how big the house they're building. I, and, I, and I voiced this opinion before. Pre-annexation, I do not agree with Approving on this council. Perfect example, Klein. Guaranteed he was going to annex in. We pre annexation, he's still in here. Now these poor people are here. And again, I was against the other one because we had no control over the building permits, nothing over that. Let's start thinking of a city, guys. If we're going to take these people in, then let's look at that. We have control on, follow our codes, building codes. Because it's only fair that county, I don't know how strict county codes are. I really don't. Uh, we have Alderman Cadella and then Alderman Coles. Along the lines of what Mr. Uh, what Alderman Wesley is talking about, I mean, is there, Ross, are you aware of any situation, any agreement we can enter with the county whereby we manage any permits? I'm unaware of any situations like that. You know, if the county were to ask us, could we administer a permit in your town, we'd probably also tell them no. Um, as far as our regulations, I mean, uh, yeah, those property would be annexed in as R1. Under the R1 regulations, they would be permitted to have 35% lot covered. Uh, the petitioner is only proposing an addition to his house. As it is, uh, the 35% lot coverage with the size of this property, they're not coming, they're not coming anywhere close to that 35% lot coverage yet. Alderman Coles. All right. Uh, <clears throat> if it's annexed into the city anyway, we send out building inspectors anyway to make sure it's up to our code before it's. At, no, we don't. We did at. Uh, we did at the other one on uh, Wooddale Road. Jazz Cult, we inspected the the uh, the sewer service itself. The sewer service. That's all. Correct. Because that was. Oh, tied all right. Up. Okay. All right. Alderman Winger. <clears throat> Thank you. Mr. Clicker, I heard you recap some of the differences or similarities between uh, building under the county versus building under Wooddale. Mm -hmm. And are there any other, are there any differences that exist? Not that I'm, major differences that I'm aware of, no. We're both following the International Building Code. We both follow the same building code practices. Um, as far as setback, density, and that, they, the requirements are similar between the county and the city. Um, the major differences that come in, in in this particular case would be the, uh, the the zoning requirements in there that the county zoning would be would have would quite possibly allow for an, for a greater subdivision of this property in the future than the city would. The pre annexation agreement, in my opinion, would stop that because the city has an agreement with this petitioner that they will annex into the city and abide by our rules in the future. Okay, thank you. Um, I think this is my last one. I've become cynical in my year and a half I've been sitting up here, and I don't mean that, that you folks would do this, but time changes everything. Were you to sell? Were Klein to never annex? Were you to never be annexed because of this, but under uh, pre-annexation agreement with our sewer? The next owner comes in and realizes that under county uh, zoning ordinance, they could probably split this into three lots. Does our pre-annexation agreement on this property specify that the sewer is being brought to one and only one primary structure. We can definitely uh, require
request that, that be put in. We can request not only that, but no further subdivision of this property under this annexation pre-annexation agreement while using our sewer. Is that also? I believe that to be correct. I will check with it. I will and consult with and we can know that by next Thursday for final decision as yes, well. Sir. Thank you. I think I'm done. No other questions? Okay. Then. I'll make a motion to uh, enter into a pre-annexation agreement with the city uh, for his property located at 5 North 061 Wooddale Road with the specification that he cannot split the lot. Is that what the uh, what you said, Alderman Cadella? You cannot subdivide. And uh, we'll get we'll find out from the attorney whether this is allowable before we make a final vote on this. Alderman Winger, you want to? And then I'd also like to add that um, that the attorney is going to look at how we keep this agreement. So, so it would go beyond the 12 months or beyond that limitation. So once there is a property adjacent, then there would automatically be an annexation. I agree. Do we have a second on the motion? Second. And okay. a question. question. Alderman Felice. We seem to have a lot of questions here. Most of them are probably legal. I mean, I have no problem bringing them in. And like Alderman Kadala, we've seen too many deals going on when uh, the petitioner another petitioner was here was saying well we're with the county if you guys don't want to take us in we can you know we can probably put a massage parlor or 12 you know 20 unit condo there or something before we enter into any pre-annexation if if it doesn't say that this is a single family home i'm definitely going to be against it can that be part of it? Yeah, uh, we can specify that the the pre-annexation allow a hookup to one single-family residence. Um, as far as subdivision of the property, uh, further subdivision of the property, I will consult with the city attorney to make sure that that is applicable. Well, that's satisfying. Okay, and Alderman Wesley. One question. There is too many questions here that he has to find out for the city attorney. My recommendation, until we move forward and take a final vote on this, Let's get the answers first. If this is coming back to the council, we don't have all the answers. Let, let's. But then they got to start back again with us through committee. Are you making a motion to table or what? I'm making a motion to table at the council until we get the f final say on all this. If we don't have a final say, then it goes back to committee. Because there's, there's like nine questions that he has to contact the attorney on right now. There's a lot out here, guys. Do we have a second on the motion to table? Second. <laughs> Would you please call the roll and motion to table? Do we get to the answers? Till so, um, next week. So, council? To full council. Provide, provided the attorney has all the answers. If not, it goes all the way back to committee table. Agreeable? Well, let's take a vote. Alderman Wesley? Yes. Alderman Police? Yes. Alderman Lewitan? Yes. Alderman Shockey? Yes. Alderman Cadella? No. Alderman Winger? Yes. Alderman Coles? No. Alderman Knipe? Yes. Motion carries. We'll be table till next week when we hear from the lawyers. Okay. So Can I just, yeah, I mean, I know what I think. Ma'am, you, ma if you're going to speak, oh, you have okay. to go up to the microphone your concern is about the size of the house that we want to put on there is that what it is that's what it is right my concern also is the size of that house we don't know what the standard is in county versus our standards okay you you could i have no big i have no idea how big your house is going to be okay and i just want to say if we annex in your property we want some control on what size lot you're building in additions. That's okay. the only thing I'm saying. Gotcha. Okay, items to be considered for future meetings. Number one, the tree preservation ordinance. When are we getting to that one? 
honest with you i'm not familiar with the tree preservation ordinance uh, itself i believe that will be coming uh, perhaps alderman winger has something to add on that so i was just going to add too that um i was surprised to see it on planning zoning because it was previously in public works but whatever committee i'm okay with um uh, however when i did a uh, motion a table if it's the one specific to what we discussed back in august late july i had tabled it to september so we, we really need to get it done in September, or, or at least have the discussion again. And I'm okay, whatever committee it sits on is, you know, I'm okay with that. But we gotta focus on September. So I don't know if we have it at the end of, um, if we have a fourth meeting or if we include it in on next week, council meeting. Either way, okay, thank you. On the same committee? Yeah, it's been on Public Works. I think maybe it was just an inversion. We'll just put it on Public time. Works, if you would, please. Uh, and the uh, second item is a, it hasn't gone through the zoning board yet, but the uh, commercial and recreational vehicle parking storage sometime in October, probably, if they come back with us with some answers. Right, we've been working on that with the zoning board. We're very close to a final ordinance, uh, draft ordinance, and uh, we'll be finalizing that at our October meeting. Okay, forward. and the last question I have is when there will be another meeting with uh, the building department manager, yourself, and Cad Alderman Cadell and myself with the uh, zoning consultant. It's been a long time since we've uh, heard anything. Alderman Cadella. You know? One question about the tree preservation ordinance. I mean, there's there's two on either on the books or hopefully soon to be on the books within the city, one on private land and, and one for the parkway trees. Parkway trees has always been public works but private land has always been planning, zoning, and building. Does anybody know, I, so I assume the tree preservation ordinance under planning, zoning, and building is with regards to our existing tree preservation ordinance on private property, and I assume that's why it's here. Does anybody in this room, can you validate my theory? Alderman Winger. I believe back uh, before you were on council, Alderman Cadell, we had the discussion for the tree preservation ordinance on public works. Whether or not, I, and I'm not discussing whether or not that was appropriate, but the, it, it was previous practice. Okay. We, we had it under public works. And I don't have any problem with it, so. Okay. So uh, can we get uh, an update on when we will be having another meeting with the zoning? I'll check with Mr. Noah tomorrow. I'd appreciate that, and um, oh, yeah, and you're going to also find out by next week if we do have a uh, date limit on permits yes, and so forth, because uh, I was always told by the building department that it was one year, and I'd like to confirm that. If not, I'd like to make sure that that's part of our ordinances. Right. For, for building permits, it definitely is a year to enact a permit. When it gets into uh, land development, there's different time lanes and regulations, and I'm going to get a firm answer for you by that for her next. I'd week. appreciate it. Anything else for this future items in this committee? No, if not, uh, I make a motion to adjourn the Planning, Zoning, and Building Committee. Do I have a second? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Would the minute like it, Will the minute taker like to take a break, or or should we continue? It should be relatively quick. Okay. I'm going to call to order the uh, Public Works Committee meeting of September 11, 2008. I declare a quorum. Item number three, approval of minutes of August 14, 2008. I make that motion. Is there a second? And the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item is a report and recommendation award of 2008 sidewalk program. And I make that motion to recommend that a contract be awarded to GM Cement Construction Incorporated in the amount of $31,547.30. Is there a second? Second. And the question, Alderman Shockey? Oh, just to make sure I understand, where are these sidewalks situated? I, I uh, also had the same question, and I confirmed, and to, to my um, favor as well, that these are the broken sidewalk situations where there's a, uh, a change in elevation or a crack. 
these are the uh, kind of like the sidewalk repair type. Thank you. And uh, I'm not sure if there's anything else to add to that. Alderman Calls? Uh, there was supposed to be a new sidewalk put in uh, between Windsor and Porter in that street, uh, Elmwood. There's supposed to be a sidewalk put in there this, this year. If you're referring to the section of Elmwood where that abandoned pavement is, Yes. That, that's being done under the roadway program, which is under contract now, and they'll probably do that okay. work jointly. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Anything Thank else you. on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item, item number five, is a report and recommendation revisions to stormwater ordinance. And I was able to take a look through this, and the stormwater committee has been working hard, working through all of the... Uh, rules and regulations on the new best management practices and how to apply them to Wooddale and even uh, get, get a little more strict on, on uh, residential properties. And everything uh, looked good to me. The only points that I'd like for uh, it, me and Mr. Graff talked and on page three, I'm sorry, on page two, Page four, no, item number one, section C, if we can fine tune the dollar amounts in, um, in, in the copy that comes to council and instead of having it per acre, have it broken down by square foot or, or something that we can adapt to the piece of property that they're either tearing down or, uh, or working on less than a half acre in size. And other than that, my only other comment before I open this up for discussion is also it would be ideal or, or my request that we craft the ordinance where if a property needs to, um, it, if the property owner is looking at doing the in lieu payment, that they would actually request approval from stormwater and, and council, so, so then we would agree with them that yes, you can pay the money versus do the improvements. Because ultimately I'd like to see the improvements be done versus the money because it ultimately makes the neighborhood a better, better, more drainable place. And uh, so I'm okay with either them going to stormwater for approval to pay the fee or stormwater and council. I'm okay either way on that. And, and, and with that, before I open up for discussion and questions, uh, Ms. Graff, did, did you want to add any overview on this before we uh, start the discussion? Uh, sure. Let me give a brief overview. I, I've taken uh, two, two separate items and I combined them into one agenda item. The reason I did that is because they're so closely related, but I hope it's not too confusing for people and I, I, want, I want it to be clear. It's two separate things. One is the new county revisions, which um, involve the best management practices. The other is our Wooddale Stormwater Commission's uh, recommendations on some items more stringent and some items more related to general stormwater management. And they were actually working on this before the county even uh, started a lot of their work. So hopefully that's kept all clear the stormwater commission's recommendations on the, on the last two pages and i think the, the main area where they're more stringent is that um, the stormwater commission's recommendations really have no lower limit on when you would have to either do the best management practices or pay a fee in lieu of whereas the counties have a one acre limit for single family and two family um, residences yeah, in terms of who would do fee in lieu of for something like a teardown lot? It's extremely difficult to meet the best, best management practices. The, the main reason being uh, basic turf grass is not considered a best management practice. So if you were to treat all the runoff from your property, which is what we're talking about, getting pollutants out of the rainwater, you would have to plant something like a prairie grass around your property, which I expect most homeowners, homeowners would not want to do. Um, so if, if the Stormwater Commission recommendations are adopted, all of those smaller lots, or virtually all the smaller lots and teardown lots, would go for the fee in lieu of. Uh, as Alderman Winger mentioned, it's $3,000 per acre, 
I would imagine the typical teardown lot is probably something like a quarter acre. If it's a quarter acre, that would equate to $750. I don't think there's many, many parcels of a full acre being developed with just one home. So in essence, if the Stormwater Commission's recommendations are adopted, any teardown lot would be paying that fee, basically. Thank you. Anything on the question? I'll start from one end and move my way down. Alderman Wesley. But correct me if I'm wrong. We still, regardless if we have ordinance or a plan like this, we still have to pay by the DuPage County. Correct. No matter what is adopted or not adopted here. So the Page County stays. They took effect August 1st. So all we do then is amend and and more or less what we're doing is we're making our own to tighten it up a little tighter. Am I correct here? Correct. We were lowering the, the thresholds, again, from one acre to right, but any, they, develop, any residential development. All right, but we still have to follow the county regardless. Right. Correct. That's why I'm saying it. Alderman Police. I've got a couple of questions. <laughs> all right, we can, I can come back around then. <laughs> Only twice. <laughs> okay, no problem. So let's say if I buy an acre lot and I want to build my house. Does that mean I'm going to, and there's a swale in the back, so it's really nice. <laughs> so I can, what, I'm putting a wetland detention basin in the backyard or a, a swale with native vegetation? When we say native vegetation, are we talking about the junk that's on potter and that in that pond between ash and 83 you know that one that looks I, like I it's a, a junkyard is that we're gonna evasive plantings although i'm not any expert on wetland well it's I'm native not, vegetation not sure that's native, it, I, I remember being on stormwater and i was used to complain why don't we get that cleaned up well at the time mr holmes was a director and he was saying well that's native vegetation not evasive evasive whatever so in other words, everybody's people are in the backyards are little new few teardowns are going to have uh, they're all going to look like their retention pond on Potter is what we're telling me here, right? Well, yeah. get, because if, if they're if all they going to do this native vegetation, right? If they want to do on-site best management practices, but I think in most cases they would pay the fee in lieu of because the, the requirement from the county is to treat 100 percent of your property. So if, you're, if you were to have a little wetland in your backyard, you have to find some way of draining your front yard back to it, which, you know, again, it's not practical in most cases. Okay. So, so in most cases, you would pay the so $750 then, or whatever. Then we go to the fees. Right. So everybody will just start paying the $3,000 and, and, and forget about it. Now, do they still need to – every property has to maintain – hold so much water or whatnot, correct? That's to adhere to the stormwater regulations. The, when they pay the 3000 do they no longer have to adhere to their regulations? No, the, the detention requirements are a separate regulation. That's separate. And again, with the detention, the, the limit with, under the county ordinance is three acres, under the Wooddale ordinance is two acres for residential, has to provide detention. So anything less than two acres in Wooddale does not have to provide detention. But if these, if the Stormwater Commission's recommendations are adopted, they would have to do the best management practices or pay the fee in lieu of. Alderman Lewitton, do you have any uh, discussion on this? Since I'm allowed with one question, I would like to. No, two. <laughs> well, since I, I would like to defer my question.